Good afternoon. We have a really exciting, interesting discussion today based upon one of my favorite, the only favorite psychiatrists I know, Dr. Carl Jung. Exactly. And actual topic for today's conversation is it is now or never. It is time <laughs> to get your health, each and every person out there, your health together in the right place, in the right capacity, because folks, I got some terrible Terrible, terrible news and updates for you from as an insider within the healthcare system. So what you're going to hear might cause anxiety, might cause uh, discomfort, but that's exactly why I'm causing, uh, saying this, because time has come. We no longer have the luxury of unhealthy lifestyle, feelings, emotions, and not being well. Time has come. Here's why. Uh, and nothing, yeah. nothing in the world or out of world is more important than your health. Exactly. If you don't have your health, it doesn't matter what else you have or don't have. Uh, case and example, when I had the, well, the, the, the accident with a spine injury, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't, well, now I'm back to lots of stuff, but uh, when I couldn't function, when I was in constant pain and discomfort, nothing mattered. It didn't matter what house I was in. It didn't matter what, what car I was driving or what I was, I was in. Uh, it didn't matter what the bed was. Uh, well, it did to some degree. But the bottom line is you're not well. Nothing is going to go well. So take care of yourself. Now, let's talk about the healthcare system and what's happening in the hospitals out there. There's a lot of news. Uh, and by the way, is anybody, I just, I'm just going to ask a question. If anybody is still, still out there watching news and trusting the main uh, mainstream media, uh, you don't have to raise your hand. Uh, if you, uh, uh, Well, good luck because... Yeah. There is no sense whatsoever and nothing you can trust. I wouldn't trust any mm. news media today. Yeah. And I, but I know some people are trying to keep up with information or misinformation. <laughs> I'm just going to say the topic for today's radio is going to be read between the lines, subtopic. Because what, I'm going, what we're going to be talking about is, well, something that gets people in trouble. And we want to stay on, on the air and uh, online. <laughs> so... I'm going to seriously say this is like just like my, what we learned in the former Soviet Union, uh, good old communist regime uh, with KGB and all the other enforcements and neighbors spying on each other and all kinds of stuff. Let's learn to read between the lines. Time has come. That and, skill set has become necessary. And remember, he moved away from it when he was 12 years old. Uh, we ran, our family ran like a bat out of hell. And now, <laughs> now it has followed us. Uh, well, I'm not sure where in the world it is. If, you know, if you're, you're going to be free to be free. Uh, but uh, let's uh, switch on topic. Uh, I do want to say there are certain things that we're not going to mention today by ourselves, and we're not going to answer certain questions on that, and that involves a certain type of a virus that I'm not going to say because once you say the <laughs> word and once you say something that's not according to policy or, uh, or storyline, uh, you will be done. Uh, and so I am saying nothing more about this. Dr. Shealy is going to say nothing more about that. But we can talk about viruses. They've been around for thousands of years, right? Okay. Uh, and we can talk about the immune system, and, and we can always talk about the healthcare system. Now, uh, I work in a community, small community hospital. I had multiple contracts in ERs in addition to my wellness practice. I am down to one main contract. I walked away from another contract when the policy and when they saw that what was happening and what was required of the emergency room doctors, basically all the providers went completely against my moral and my, uh, and uh, it basically violated the basic principle of do no harm. So I had to walk away. Now, was it the smartest thing to do? Maybe not in terms of being an employee and so on and so forth, but I, that's just was intolerable. I am still connected to, the, to what's happening in the world, in addition to our wellness practice, so I can report to you on some of the horrors, horrors, excuse me, of what is out there. Now, I work in a small community hospital uh, about every other weekend, sometimes more, sometimes less, and I'm not going to say the name of the hospital, but uh, then again, it's, uh, you can look me up easily. It's uh, the community is small, the hospital is very friendly, and we used to have a very easygoing community environment. Now, I've worked in some major level one and two trauma centers, and I've, I've seen the whole range of emergency rooms and hospitals and organizations. Uh, the smaller hospitals so far they tend to be able to avoid some of the complications of the big ones. Again, mostly because most of the chains 
Anytime you have Barnes Jewish, that's a big chain here in the St. Louis area. There is Mercy is a huge chain of large a number of hospitals. So being a small hospital is basically almost impossibility. Having an independent office outside of the big chains is almost impossibility. It's a game of monopoly that has always been apparent, but has now become so obvious that survival is absolutely not guaranteed for anybody who wants to stay outside the system. That's number one. That's, that's a bad news because Instead of serving the community, everything comes down from the center, so to speak, and then whoever dictates the guidelines and the rules and regulations now has the power over everything. I'll say this again, power over everything and everybody. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, the smaller hospital that I work in used to be, you know, has been a very nice uh, uh, uh uh, nice place. And by the way, we'll, we'll get to this in a bit, uh, but I, I still want to cover a few things. Uh, but uh, please keep in mind, Carl Jung and psychic epidemic, psych, uh, well, psychotic breaks for the whole society. How's that? But let me continue with what's happening in small hospitals and big hospitals from the insider view. Small hospitals. So we get loaded with people who are basically sick. And interestingly enough, and I'm not going to say any more on this, so please don't ask me, but I'm going to say this one more time. Again, read between the lines. I'm seeing a lot of uh, certain viral uh, complications. And the concern and interesting thing that are uh, coming up, and people are very surprised when they get that, is a lot of those folks have actually had those mandatory and otherwise jabs. And again, I'm not going to say the name of what that is either, because we're not going to be <laughs> shut down. <laughs> we don't want to be shut down. And please don't have to repeat it. But again, I'm just going to say, interesting observation. Uh, and there's a huge prevalence of pneumonias, uh, especially COVID pneumonias. People have terrible oxygenation. But people, especially in, this, in these communities, uh, the, the ones who come in are also morbidly obese, smokers, lung disease, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and predominantly a lot of bad things. Now, is it, do I have some people who are healthy and have it? Very rare that they stay in a hospital. So back to lifestyle. If you don't have lifestyle, that's not good. It's terrible. Now you're going to say something. Uh, I think. Well, let's face it. Probably a minimum of 90% of illness is stress. And let's face it also that 97.5% of Americans are not bright enough to be alive. And to me, you're not bright enough to be alive if you don't follow the basic health habits that are essential for life. Body mass index, 18 to 24. No smoking. Eating a minimum of 5 to 8 or 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Exercising a minimum of 30 minutes, 5 days a week. And sleeping seven or eight hours every night. Those are the basics. Without that, you're going to die early. Exactly. But let's continue. So <laughs> let's, uh, we've got a lot, big topic to cover here, lots of stuff. So what normally happens in the small community hospitals is it's called critical care uh, or critical access hospital. In other words, people come, uh, we, we stabilize them and we get them to a bigger hospital. Now, what's been happening is that these small hospitals and my hours included, and I spent several weekends recently, and it's become, unfortunately, interestingly, a rule, not, not the exception, is that instead of just the regular kind of regular flow in and out of patients and then transferring those who need to be transferred to the specialists to where there is higher level of care, ICU units, and so on and so forth, because we don't have that. There's lots of little hospitals just like what I'm talking about that are facing the same exact thing. That's why I'm talking about it. Uh, what happens is, there is nowhere to send them. Every bed is full. But now let's analyze that and let's look at, at that because you're going to probably be hearing and listening. And I, I, I'm not going to listen to the news, but you'll probably be hearing and listening to the fact that the system is overrun, that uh, certain uh, by the certain illness has taken over the world and everybody is dying by the dozens uh, uh, every, every single microsecond. Now, the fact of a matter is you cannot get into the bigger hospitals. Number one, the staff is, is, is fleeing by the second. There's layoffs, ma massive layoffs, because of certain requirements. Again, please don't ask me to say what that requirement <laughs> is. But again, if you can read between the lines. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, uh, and, and so there's empty beds sitting in the hospitals not being utilized because there's not enough humans who are willing to work under certain conditions or who are allowed to work under certain conditions. I'm, I'll say it again. 
system and policy error uh, or situation. Uh, number two, uh, people who don't need to be put in ICUs get put in ICUs. So then when people get actually sick, like I had a surgical patient, had nothing to do with any, anything viral, had a perforated belly and was trying to die on us, literally, with vitals that were tanking, basically going down. And we couldn't get them anywhere because there were no beds in ICUs. They were, they were taken up by people who didn't need necessarily to be there. So mismanagement of resources, and that is what's happening in this everywhere. And let me, uh, let me actually go further, and we're going to be seeing more and more of the insanity as we go along. So I just want to put the message out there. If you're already stressed out about what's going on, you might as well relax because this is nothing compared to what may be coming. Uh, and I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing or, or a terrible thing, but the fact of the matter is we need to settle in and start realizing are we taking care of our health? Because if you're relying on the healthcare system, and by the way, I'm going to say a few more things. Access to specialists, cardiologists, oncologists, uh, uh, you name it. You can get into people. Again, it, it's, 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 an, it's a pandemic, but is it a shortage of, of uh, resources? No, it's mismanagement and misuse of resources. That's, that's what the situation is, and we have to realize that the whole thing is coming down so much, for, not so much from the people. People are trying to do the right thing to a large degree. It's actually coming down from the top. And what is the top? I'm not going to say what that is because, again, uh, <laughs> you uh, read between the lines. Uh, and well, I, this I, is I a good time to. I would remind them that they go back and read my book, Third Party Rape. Thank you. Okay, enough said. Now, this <laughs> is a good time to jump into an interesting topic called, you know, let's talk about Carl Jung math, or psychic epidemic or. Uh, let's see, I have a, I've written this down here, mass psychosis of a society. Let's talk about that. I mean, again, the fact that Carl Jung wrote about it means to me, I hadn't thought about this before. And what he was talking about was specific episodes. Mm. But I don't believe there's ever been a worldwide episode mm -hmm. like the one going on now. Mm -hmm. I mean, interestingly, when you look at the literature that came with the article that was talking about Carl Jung's article, they give individual situations where 20, 30, 50 people, maybe hundreds, or a thousand here and there, but most of the time it was not other than a specific local area. But they didn't have mass media. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't have it. And now we have it worldwide for the first time, I believe, in history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I took a few notes. Uh, well, I usually don't take much time on things that people send. Well, if it's interesting, I do, but I, a lot of things that I listen to, you know, makes may, may not, not make sense. Let's talk about psychic epidemic. What are some of the factors? Psychotic break is the reordering, interestingly enough, of one's reality. So it sounds vaguely similar to the new, uh, the new normal. How's that? Does that <laughs> ring a bell, uh, anybody? Uh, now, how does it all begin? A flood of fear, anxiety, and panic. Does that sound familiar? Uh, it certainly sounds familiar today. Okay. And I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to enjoy saying this next line, but I think it's important to say, because, again, this is a this is not my statement. I'm just quoting some this, something that I heard in a population of weak and vulnerable mentally, emotionally and physically. Uh, uh, it is easy to fall prey to panic and fear, setting up the stage for the next phase. So uh, how did we get to a society that is so vulnerable on all these layers that we have gotten to the place where we are. Well, I honestly think it began with television. Mm -hmm. Before that, we didn't have the kind of control. There was radio, and even in radio, you could do it, I suppose. But, but I believe it actually was getting people mesmerized, hypnotized, addicted to watching television, which in general, I would say conservatively, 90% of the time is a waste of time anyway. Mm -hmm. A few other things that are interesting is that uh, usually the next phase after the implementation of fear and concern, and again, I'm not going through this systematically in terms of every single step, but another major thing that follows is the concept of, big word, lots of syllables, totalitarianism, totalitarianism. And then there is all sorts of isms that you can use Communism is what I grew up, what I what I grew up in, and what what, what we ran away from, uh, basically initially to get to the 
country that's America, which is a, a well end of opportunity and the American dream. But again, I'm I'm not going to go into certain places and it right was now. Thirty years ago, it was is uh, as of ten years ago where we were doing just fine in certain ways, or so we seemed. But the interesting thing is that one of the best ways to actually to affect to implement fear and anxiety and stress is not by pushing directly and, and, and continuously, but rather in waves. And that that is actually interesting. There's a very terrible experiment that was mentioned to me. Uh, it's a basically boiling of frogs. And anybody for, who is a human rights activist will, will basically have their blood boil on this as well when I say this. But the concept is. If they took a frog and they and hot water and they put the frog in hot water, the frog realized that it was going to die. I'm not sure it realized or not, but the reflex was to jump out of that hot water and save its life. Perhaps with a burn, but uh, jump out. If they took a water and started warming up gen gently and then keeping it stable again, uh, uh, give people uh, give the frog a break, then heat it up again. Then uh, by the time the frog realizes that it's been cooked and it's got nothing left. Uh, it there is move. it can't move. It's uh, it's got no resources. It's got so where are we, where are we going with this? You, if the bottom line is, and we keep talking about health. Uh, Dr. Shiel has been talking about health for decades. Essentials of and why is it lifestyle supplementation? For example, uh, a good B complex and a vitamin C essentials and youth formula. That's everybody should be on something like that or equivalent. There's a lots of other vitamins, vitamin D3, uh, magnesium. Uh, there's lots of other enhancing supplements, and you can find that, by the way, uh, on our website, the realholisticdoc.com. And because of the situation in the world, we, we do want to help people as much as possible. So there's a code. I'm going to say this, uh, and it's uh, actually summer 2021. And this is when you go to the website, uh, realholisticdoc.com. You can basically enjoy the savings on everything including the immune support products. Uh, but more so important than the products, even though you have to have something to, to help yourself, is the concept of mental stability and health. Because if society is insane and you're trying to stay sane, you're not going to be consistent with society. You have to have your own resources. And in order to have your own resources, you, there's got to be mental, emotional, and physical supports. And one of the one of the best mental and emotional is actually retraining of your central nervous system. And the best thing, the most scientific thing, the most studied thing in history is autogenic training. Mm -hmm. If you are not willing to train your brain with autogenic training, that means 18 minutes twice a day for three months, well, enjoy dying is the way I look at it because Unless you can detach from the nonsense, mm -hmm. and certainly nothing today it makes sense. Unless you can detach from it, good luck. Exactly. Now I do want to check in. There is a game going on. So uh, is it still there? Okay. So we'll carry on, and then when we jump back to the regular radio programming, we'll repeat some of the key concepts. But uh, thank you so much. So uh, so again, you may have you may hear some things twice, but it's worth repeating. It's worth hearing. Uh, Let's let's stay with some of the basics and essentials. You do not have the luxury in this crazy world that's basically trying to, uh, well, let me say it this politically correct way, trying not to help you survive. <laughs> Double negative. Again, read between the lines. Uh, now it's your responsibility. It's each of our responsibility to take care of ourselves. And if we're not doing something right, if we're not taking care, care of ourselves, if there's extra weight, if there is uh, medical problems, if there is uh, other lifestyle aspects, if you're not taking proper supplements, if you're not boosting your system with, for example, intravenous uh, modalities that, such as vitamin C, Myers cocktail, very large doses, or ozone, uh, intravenous ozone, and we talked about that last uh, radio segment. Uh, just a quick summary. On top of the, all the good things that people do, uh, one of the things that has kept me from getting sick, and I've been exposed in the emergency room to all sorts of people up to, ten, up to 10 times a day with severe COVID symptoms and basically for sneezing and coughing on everything and everybody, and I'm okay. My immunity is fantastic. I actually measured it, and uh, I... One of the things I do is I come when I come back from the weekend from the work in the hospital, usually it's a Monday or a Tuesday, uh, I get an intravenous ozone vitamin C before the bugs, any bugs, get a chance to settle in. And, and during um, the entire yeah. time, the last 18 months alone, 
I also get an IV prophylactically at least every other week. And that's wonderful. So what we so the recommendation is, and there is we talk, we went over the science behind the vitamin C, which is the immune boost, support of the uh, detoxification, support of the basic functions, but also ozone, which cleans everything out inside the body, inside the blood, anything viral, bacterial, uh, fungal, but also optimizing and jumpstarting the immune system and any impurities. One of the best detoxes in the well, the combination is wonderful. If I wasn't doing that, I'm not sure I would be in a place where I can tolerate all this stuff. <laughs> uh, but I am, and that's great. Now, I did have COVID. I, COVID as an illness. I can, I can talk as a patient. I'm not saying anything as a doctor right now. Uh, and it was rough. It was terrible. It felt terrible, but I got through it. And I stayed away from the hospitalization because I was in a pretty terrible place by following the same, very same advice that we are talking about here, plus some other modalities, including some medicines that are also being squeezed out of existence, by the way, by the establishment. And interestingly enough, um, this is how the progression is. This is what I'm talking about, the rounds and the pressure from above. CVS pharmacy chain. About four or five weeks ago, I called in a certain medication by the name of ivermectin, and they, were, they had no problem giving it. About two weeks later, when I called in for a different client, and, I, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to help whoever needs help. We have a telephone consultations uh, and so on and so forth. I'll give that number in a second. When I called to the same pharmacy, I was, I was, I was threatened that I would be reported. Uh, that, that's number one. And they refused when I told them that I didn't care that I, that about their threat. They, then they refused to basically to feel it, even though they had it. And that I asked, is that your personal opinion or is that a, coming down from above, from the chain? And it's coming down from the chain, but it goes even deeper than that. Who is controlling all of that? Uh, who, is, who is making the policies? Okay. NIH, CDC, WHO. And why are we not surprised that certain things get approved and certain things go, you know, well, go ahead. And interestingly, today, from a yeah. physical therapy friend of ours in Florida, I got yeah. a request for such a prescription because the pharmacies are not providing it. And I anticipate this, the, the, this cycle. I, I think of it as anaconda squeezing down. So, folks, things are not going to get easier. Things are not going to get better in terms of what's anticipated in the near future, at the very least. So that's, this is what we're saying. At this point, time has come. You, and when I say you, I mean, I mean all of us, do not have the luxury. We don't have the time. We don't have the... Uh, we, we're no longer capable of uh, staying away from or uh, missing essential health behaviors and taking care of ourselves. And if, if there's a chronic illness... And your doctor is not taking care of it. You can get into your doctor, which is more, even more likely. Uh, then you've got to take proactive steps and uh, do things that we're talking about in terms of ho holistic health, mental, emotional, physical supplementation. And when it comes to it, a, a consultation and evaluation personally with a holistic provider to see where you are and what you need to do. And only 1% yeah. of physicians are truly holistic. Yeah. The word integrative. Well, I can't even say what I think of it because it is mostly fake. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, just in case we do have a you know, telephone and Skype and all the other things, and a lot of our visits have actually, my visits have become well over 50% telephone Same from thing. around the world. Around, actually, I'm getting counsel from Canada, as a matter of fact. So, uh, and there's been other continents too. But the number is uh, to the clinic if you're interested in intravenous, which is, by the way, there's a code for 10% off IVs until the end of October. And again, why, why are we doing this? Because we want people to not have to think about the money or at least to, be, to think easier about that in terms of taking care of yourself. And to plan. And to plan. And, so be, and once you get an IV or a package, you can use it any time, but this is a special to, get, to turn come in and to take care of yourself once every week, once every a month. It depends on your health, depends on your condition, but uh, once you start doing all the right things to begin with, boosting your system, you're, you, you should be able to get through the season without too many problems or this insanity, personally. And that's what it comes down to. Each person doing their best and beating the odds. That's how we're going to do this. It's not the question of... Actually, I just want to say something again. I, I'm going to please read between the lines. Uh, I'm, you know, there's, a, there's a, a statement that comes from the former Soviet Russia, which if you translate exactly, it reads something like, for the greater good. Uh, does that sound <laughs> familiar? Uh, I'm not going to say anything more. So for the greater good of Dr. Shealy, I'm not going to force Dr. Shealy to do something that Dr. Shealy has no intention of wanting to do. 
uh, <laughs> that's what I, that's the lesson I learned in, in the former uh, country. But uh, anyhow, I hope we're learning a lot of lessons and I hope we are making use of all this somehow and we're going to make a positive change somehow. Uh, all right. So uh, a few announcements and I'll repeat this again. And by the time when we are back on the radio, we'll kind of summarize big major concepts. We are expanding and we are hiring because with all the IVs and every all the activity, there's actually a need for another LPN and the receptionist uh, at this point and maybe more people down our the clinic. line in our clinic. And uh, But I do want to say that uh, if you're going to be working in a holistic center, you've got to have a holistic mindset. We had several interviews and uh, when a person comes in, and again, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, you know, everyone is a qualified candidate is a qualified candidate, but the bottom line is if you're going to be applying or if you're thinking of applying to a holistic type center, you first of all start with holistic mentality and also, um, well, fear. I, I, we've seen several people who are so afraid to even be anywhere near things so that <laughs> well, I don't know, I don't understand why they want, want, want to work in the medical office. Let me just put it that way. Uh, but if those uh, people who are taking care of themselves, thinking holistic and minded, uh, we the, the team is open to uh, uh, well uh, new team members. Um, a few other uh, announcements. By the way, interestingly enough, uh, the appointments are filling up uh, quite uh, rapidly in the last few weeks. Uh, the waiting uh, waiting line is is growing. So I just want to say that if you really if you want to get in, whether it's an exemption of some sort, and I'm not going to say what kind of exemption. <laughs> uh, again, read between the lines. Or uh, if you're interested in certain medicines that might become extinct like the dinosaurs did or, or the freedom in the former Soviet Union, uh, again, read between the lines, then please don't wait until to me you make an appointment with somebody who can help you. And that's, again, there's lots of people maybe around. I hope there's lots of people around. I know we're available. 351-5221. And if you want to get the products and the good things, especially for the immune system, um, realholisticduck.com and again there is a code until the end of the week you can get 10 percent off uh, pretty much major supplements uh, for the immune system and otherwise and uh, the code is summer 2021 uh, and i do want to mention that personally i have ordered a six month supply to have on hand of whey protein as a backup i think that's the single best uh, food supplement to have on hand for long term and although we carry it even in our store i'm ordering an extra six months and next week i hope we will have a new plan for six months of everything you might need mm. to be prepared and because i was a boy scout and i still believe in being prepared Absolutely. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I was never into the prepping mindset until recently, but now I appreciate it fully. <laughs> I mean, this is great. Uh, uh, so uh, a few other points. And, you know, while there is uh, still the radio, uh, well, sorry, the game going on, we'll just keep on talking. Uh, but uh, actually, you know what, let's. OK, well, it gives us a chance to talk and uh, any thoughts comments or anything on there and by the way i will not respond we will sorry we will not respond to anything that with a certain letter or a certain thing not because we don't want to it's well um there's a certain age of censorship right now that i will point out if any of our listeners however have a burning question about any of the talk personally unacceptable words on air send me an email and i will be happy to answer it personally at norm at norm .com. I remember a time when an unacceptable word in the air was a four-letter word. Now it's nothing. <laughs> now it's nothing. Um, uh, actually, there's no, there's no questions. or Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Yeah. Yeah, I hope we haven't scared people off. I hope we have only helped you become wiser to take care of your health. So I'm just going to read this out loud because this was a message that went out in the email, and I, it just, I couldn't put it in any better words than this. So it's now and never. Get your health together especially with all the crazy things and insanity going on. You don't have the luxury of poor health, poor health habits, poor health decisions, uncontrolled stress, or depending on the sick care system in our society. I'm going to throw in another analogy. Have you, uh, I've, have you ever come across, for example, this concept of a dead carcass that hasn't started to smell yet <laughs> or stink? Okay, well, that was the healthcare system that was already dead and done with. But, you know, it didn't show itself. 
now the stink, the, 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 the stench is all <laughs> around, and now we see what's happening. And uh, so it, is it good or is it bad? It, it's bad because it stinks or it smells or stenches. But the good thing is now you see what's going on. If you were going to ride, you know, ride that, you know, planning to ride that horse or whatever that, 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 that carcass was, uh, or you're going to use, utilize, it's going to work for you. So bottom line is, I apologize for the insensitive nature and the comment there, but uh, I do want to say yeah, there's only one person that each of us can depend on ultimately and is accountable for and is responsible for. I shouldn't say depend on. We have some now, some of us have good friends and family, but you are the one who is responsible for your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, your decisions, your company of friends, how you see the world, and uh, what you do about it. And Dr. Shealy, do you have any other thoughts of wisdom? Remember, every thought is a prayer, and every word today is a prayer. Mm -hmm. The important thing is, have a plan. I'm just writing an article, can you get off diabetic medications? Mm -hmm. Well, if you are type 2, yes. Yes. I'm writing a, one of my blogs on how to, how to do it, and it includes over 20 different spiritual approaches that you can make. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is, now is the time to detach and plan. Take care. Detach from the fear, the anxiety, as a sport. Make fun out of it. Do it because you want to do it. Not just because you have to do it, but you do if you want to stay alive and healthy. And as a matter of fact, mm. uh, every challenge, uh, one of my books that I wrote early on when I was going through the colon cancer experience, colon cancer, and I, I, well, I wasn't sure how, how if I was going to live or not, so I wanted to put some wisdom into the world from what I gained. Well, a lot more wisdom since. But, uh, you know, the, the, first, uh, the first and the foremost uh, thing is you know, we are okay. We are enough. We are loved and we are loved. Mm. And when we realize that the body, this physical body, is a sacred temple in the service of the divine, in other words, I'm here to serve. I'm here to make the world better. And that's my purpose. That's what, we, that's what our practice is all about. But the only way that this temple can function is, is if it's functional. I've got to be functional mentally, emotionally, physically, free from anxiety, free from stress, you know, uh, well, terrible stress, and in a good enough physical shape to be able to do everything that I want to do. And don't forget spiritual, because the yeah. foundation is that. Yes. We do have a question online. Good. Question online. Thank yep. You. It says, I have noticed a lot of natural products, herbs, and teas are impossible to find. Where do we go when the government starts hiding these products? Uh, in the former Soviet, the answer is real simple. Black markets. I... Um, Everything that was of any value was on a black market. And, that, and those black markets were, were so well organized, by the way, that it became the first go other than a government store. You don't go to a government store and expect stuff. I mean, you expect nothing. So uh, I think there's going to be a network of establishment. And, and if you don't, you haven't already and you have a community, make sure, let's make sure that people who have chickens are in touch with people who have uh, beef, who, have, who are in touch with people who have, well, other stuff. Your future may be setting up a black market. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that, that's uh, just jokingly. I mean, I'm, but maybe not jokingly. Yeah. Next question is, do you still recommend Nitro Extreme or is it nature plus cherry juice better? Well, if, it, if you're doing it for hypertension, I would try nature plus Cherry juice country if you can get it, but if not, nitro extreme is definitely excellent and safe. Yeah, uh, Larissa's nitro oxide question is nitro extreme, it's one of the products that we have on our website. And what it is is nitro oxide, which is good for energy and uh, helps with the vascular and blood pressure type conditions. Uh, it's wonderful, uh, mm -hmm. and safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do um, basically what I do is a little a little different than most people and uh, 
because that, that's because I've already trained myself and I know that it works. Uh, I get an intravenous ozone followed by 50 grams of intravenous vitamin C. I don't start people with that. You have to build up to that. First, I had to find out that I was okay on the standard ozone. Then I went up to the high dose ozone. Then I added 25 grams of vitamin C. Then I went up to, to 50 and I'm doing good there. Now, I know some people who may have a significant detoxification reaction. So if, uh, if I were starting out uh, fresh now, I would go anywhere from 25 to 50 grams of vitamin C, and I would start off with an ozone package as well. Uh, uh, Money-wise, correct. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, personally, I, I should know about this, but I, yeah, I don't, you know, money-wise, I just don't, didn't, never got into it, and it was never my interest, but uh, the young ladies of the office do a wonderful job. Uh, Grams, uh, 50 grams of C. Ozone is a different number of units. Uh, in other words, a different set of units. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not grams on, on that. Yeah, it's gamma. Interestingly enough, the same word, gamma, stands for the, for the most amazing state of mind where everything is in, in the zone. Uh, but it's a different, again, gamma stands for many different things. But yeah, 70,000 gamma, by the way, that's a high dose uh, ozone. That's a lot. Mm. Okay, another question is, mm. do you recommend nebulizing with anything as a preventative or proactive on a daily basis, such as pico silver or hydroxide? Uh, okay, uh, there is a couple of things that are say generally safe and it works nebulizing certain things yes the uh, uh well actually uh silver colloidal, silver. colloidal uh, which is nano in, in colloidal and, and nano is the same term basically uh it just depends what you prefer uh that has been around for a long time that's pretty safe and that's that's wonderful uh, there is also hydrogen peroxide i'll say this it's hydrogen peroxide you put it in a humidifier, and uh, if you think you're coming down with something or you just want to do as preventive, you just basically, well, breathe it. Uh, put the whole bottle in there, and uh, if you need to do another bottle, that's okay. But again, if you if some people, if a lungs are sensitive, then again, just give a break. Uh, generally, much, much of the population will be able to do it just fine. Okay. Good, uh, good question. Mm -hmm. Does your clinic do telemed for the virus? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. We are that, you know, yes. That's, that, I'm not going to say you know, that's, that's the extent of my statement. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, the question is, do we, I can repeat this question. That's a safe question. Uh, does our clinic do telemed for the viruses? Yes. Even bacteria too. We do everything. We, we, we do take care of that. Yes. I'm going to try this pronunciation. Yes. What is your opinion of nebulized budosamide? It works. If you get sick, it works, and I I can prescribe that. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the regimens that is utilized depending on the severity, and it depends how sick you are. Are you preventing? Are you treating? Or are you basically in a really terrible place and you need to? Uh, we can't everything. telemed that. Uh, no, no, <laughs> telemed is, well, uh, telemed yeah. is for the mild to moderate. It's not for the severe. Uh, if oxygenation drops to 70 or 60 or even 80, uh, that's not a time for telemed. That's a time for, unfortunately, the hospital. Okay. Yeah. And uh, somebody asked if you would repeat the name of what you were talking about earlier. Uh, yeah. Carl Jung's. Oh, ivermectin. Oh, ivermectin. Yeah, that's, uh, yep. Yeah. Ivermectin, yep. Yeah. Do you know of any herbal support that would help in protecting us, such as astragalus or nettle? Ashwagandha. Or nettle. Nettle is fair, but not, there's a dozen different things. Alliance mane, bacoba, uh, there, there are a whole bunch of Fungus, uh, mushroom, mushroom, mushroom. Well, fungus. That, or, uh, yeah, that's another word for it. Yeah, that uh, are, are good for your immune system. Yes, uh, there's actually uh, there's a one that combines seven types of uh, medicinal mushrooms, uh, which is good for the immune system. 
I forgot the name of that, but just the seven mushroom extract, something of that nature. But there is, if you don't have the basics, the basics are, let's talk about this, a good B complex, such as essentials. Well, uh, I actually youth consider formula. the most essential basic is D3. Well, nowadays, absolutely. In addition to D3, 50,000 units every 10 days or every week. And, uh, and if you get sick, vitamin D3, if you have the 50,000 unit capsule, you just take three of those for three, three days, days in a row. So for technically, for those who are counting the units, 150,000 IUs, international units, uh, a day for three days, and it does work extremely well. Yeah. And you can get pretty much all of this from our store. You can just find it uh, elsewhere, realholisticdoc.com. And if you want to catch on to some of the blogs and information about all sorts of diseases, but also just wellness and everything else in general, uh, there is always a blog coming out on a regular basis. Again, you can find it at the same website. Information is free. At the very least, make sure you grab the information and you, you stay informed. Uh, and not the news, please. Uh, 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 go ahead, please. Yeah. Another, another question is, uh, can you also take cumin and ginger with your supplements? Oh, cumin. Uh, yeah, of course. Not, not a contraindication. Could be helpful. The food grade hydrogen peroxide, uh, I'm, I'm going to say the name, but you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to have it because, uh, you know, it, it, it's not allowed. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> so uh, what people have done is take the food grade and then they dilute it and use a couple of drops. And that, that, that has had a very good, interesting effect, at least anecdotally. Again, we're not allowed, research is not allowed on this. It's not allowed. Uh, but uh, if you if you can get your, your hands on that, make sure you do the proper dilution. It's very very strong if it's a food grade or the thirty five percent. It's not something you just drink out of a glass uh, by any means. Please don't. Uh, but if you want to, you know, again, if you talk about the with the solution in the, in the humidifier, three percent regular hydrogen peroxide, and then just dump the whole thing in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, how is the game going? It's an extra innings. <laughs> it's an extra innings. It looks as if we need to keep talking about how to oh, take no. care of yourself. Yes. And so let's go through that once again. At the top of my list, unequivocally, is autogenic training. Yes. If you ain't done it yet, the time has come, the walrus said. And now is the time. You must practice it twice a day for three months to train your brain. I'm very grateful that I did it in 1972. So I don't have to worry about it now because now I can do it in a minute, once or twice a day, and that's adequate. But until you've trained your brain, there's nothing else that works as well. Please get and practice, practice, practice auditory training. And of course, we've already talked about the essential habits. I don't want to repeat myself unequivocally. If you have any questions about any one of those, you know, let us know and we'll answer it individually. Mm -hmm. And detach from those things you cannot change, which is government, especially, and <clears throat> to a large extent, television and the Internet. Mm -hmm. um, I can get over 100 emails a day and... Most of the time I answer them, but if I can, I can. If time, you know, I can't allow myself to get frustrated over somebody else's problem. It's that simple. And the interesting thing is, uh, and I'm just going to throw this, throw this out again as another definition of insanity, uh, each and every single person is responsible for one person themselves. Now, we, once we are okay, we can help each other. We can help the. We can help our neighbor. We can help our family. We can help a stranger, and that's why we exist. And personally, I can. To me, life without being of service or doing the right thing is not even worth considering. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, but well, unless until I am okay, I cannot do my part in helping anybody else. There's only one purpose in life. Yeah. To help other people, and my favorite definition of love: desire to do good to, to help other people. 
Mm-hmm. So that really, that's enough. If you do those two things, you're doing a good job. And by the way, I, I just I just want to throw in an antidote, the answer to the world's problems right here, right now. The world is in a state of fear. We're in a shadow of fear demic. Uh, all a, a psychotic a, state a, of fear. A psychotic, <laughs> a psychotic break for the world, so to speak. Uh, with and by the way, just an interesting side question: in an insane world. A sane individual is considered sane or insane. Uh, <laughs> I'm just asking that question because uh, that's a question of perspective, isn't it? Uh, but anyhow, um, the the main uh, the main thing when everything around us is going crazy and is meant to go even <clears throat> crazier, there is a single unit of uh, B. Uh, you know, there's a single building block, so to speak, of wellness, and that starts with a single individual person. Enough of us. Uh, start taking care of ourselves and start paying common sense attention to the world in addition to ourselves. And I'm not going to say any more about that. And the, uh, and the idea behind that is if you're armed with love. Love is a loaded word, uh, but I'm going to define it in a certain way. Love is basically something that is higher and greater than fear. When you have love... Uh, it, when you have love for for yourself, when you have love for, for 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 your neighbor, for the other, you will do the right thing. You will do the right thing, and when the wrong thing happens, you will know when to what to do and or what not to do, and you'll know when it's your time. But bottom line is, when you have love on your side, uh, fear does not play a factor in your life, and it's the fear that it's a control factor for for the totalitarianism. I didn't say it right. Total totalitarian aspects of any, whether it's society or a high school bully or whatever that is. Bottom line, it, it stands no chance. In the world of shadow, a single source of light, a candle, will be the most powerful thing in the world. So be, be light, be love, and take care of yourself and take care of others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, about Wonderful. Intermittent fasting. Is it good to do for Yes and yes, absolutely. Intermittent fasting is one of the best metabolic supports as well as if you want to lose weight. But there is also, um, uh, I think there's a concept of you take five days uh, out of the month and you go on about uh, uh, six to 800 calorie uh, regimen, primarily vegetables, primarily vegetable based on lots of water, lots of fluids. Uh, and uh, once you do that... Uh, it's basically then the rest of the month you behave yourself. You eat well as, or as well as you can. It doesn't mean you do terrible things on, on day 1 through 25. But uh, let's say you take care of yourself. You can repeat that every single month. That's one, that's one way to do it. Another way to do intermittent fasting is on a daily basis. Build up to almost like 16, 18 hours of not eating. And that will let the liver and the body get a chance to detox itself. Well, even twelve hours. Is, even twelve hours is 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 fairly good. Yeah, at least eight for some for most people. Well, at but, least eight. But eight, eight with uh, that. I don't call it fasting for eight. Well, twelve I, hours is a minimum to call it a fast. Okay, fair enough. I'm just talking about people who are munching all the time. If they can <laughs> yeah. do eight hours, that's better. Uh, <laughs> Halitosis is better, no breath at all. However, right. however, it ain't good. Right. <laughs> okay. Any another question? Okay. Uh-huh. Regeneron, Regen- monoclonal antibodies? Uh, Regeneron, mo- okay, what do we think about Regeneron mon- monoclonal antibodies? I'm going to make a statement. In our little hospital, again, in the emergency room, this is not, a, this is not what, I, what, what we do in our practice. We don't have the capacity, we don't have access, and we don't have the, uh, you know, the way to do that. But we used to run intravenous, uh, uh, intra- monoclonal antibody called BAM. B-A-M, as a, uh, you know, that was a nickname, so to speak. And uh, I, I just wanted to see initially how it was, so I gathered some information. People seem to do well on that, but the, primarily the people who were on the sicker end and the people who were, had potential to recover fast and to be able to go home. Now, interestingly enough, it disappeared. It disappeared uh, from our use. So, again, uh, why, do, why do things disappear? Why does zinc disappear? Why do certain medications disappear? Uh, read, read between the lines. Why did common sense disappear? Yeah, maybe it's the enemy of the greater good. <laughs> yeah. 
Anything else out there? Yes. Okay. Any, any thought on wet spot treatment to pull the virus out of the body? Or are these holistic detoxing foot or holistic detoxing foot uh, food soaks are wonderful and fantastic, and they may do many, many great things. But the best and the only detox that I can recommend on an acute, on an acute and on, on, on ongoing sim programs, and this is what I do on a weekly basis, especially when I work emergency room, is intravenous treatments. But I, you have to realize I'm not just doing that. I am doing. Uh, I'm, I've got the lifestyle as much as I can, and I've got the supplements, baseline supplements, and this is basically just the icing on the cake. So, um, but if you're getting, if you're starting to get a viral illness, you may want to consider that as soon as possible. I'm just going to say that. I that want to make one other possibility for those who don't have access to intravenous mm -hmm. vitamin C. Right. Get yourself liposomal vitamin C yeah. and MSM, methyl sulfonylmethane. Mm -hmm. Most people can tolerate twice as much liposomal as they can the water-soluble vitamin C. And if you add the MSM to it, it makes it even better. So if you can get up to 10 grams of liposomal C plus MSM, MSM, you almost make it with that alone. But when you take that much vitamin C, you must take adequate B complex, especially B6. Yes. yes. <clears throat> That's why it's called Myers cocktail. It's not just vitamin yeah. C. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Another question is, can you subscribe ivermectin over the phone? With answer, a consultation, yes, I do it all the time. We do. That's correct. Okay, so the question is, I'll repeat it because sometimes it doesn't come across. Uh, is telephone consultation uh, is something that we do for certain medications such as ivermectin if it's indicated? The answer is yes, when it's indicated. Correct. Yeah. And the number to the office, just again, if somebody's interested in making that uh, call, is... Uh, 417 351 5221. I don't call ourselves too, too often here. Okay, and we got about a minute and a half, so I'm just going to close up with a quick summary of what we're talking about. The systems have already failed. I gave an, a, a rather colorful example of a basically of an already dead carcass uh, that is starting, now starting to stench. And that's, your, that's our healthcare system. It has failed. And now it is failing more and more. Uh, basically every single second, and we're seeing it on the inside and otherwise. And so the option of relying on the healthcare system and not paying attention to your health habits, not taking proper supplementation, and not taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually, and handling stress properly, those days are gone, folks. That, uh, you that's it. You, you don't have the option. Either you get sick and die, so to speak, <laughs> on, a, on an elevated schedule, a uh, progressively elevated schedule, again, read between the lines, uh, or get well. Do you happen to have the, the, the name of that article by Dr. Yu? Uh, not on me. Okay. No. Well, uh, just look up mass uh, hysteria, mass psychosis, mass... Actually, I think it was basically... Psychic epidemic, mass psychosis. Ma mass psychosis by Carl Jung. You'll find it on the internet. Yeah. In terms of how the whole society has become psychotically broken. And until next week, y'all have a good one. <laughs> and sounds like we don't have a radio this week, uh, radio, radio, but I guess we're just, uh, well, we're still on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So if anybody hasn't caught us on the radio, please watch and uh, uh, we'll carry on uh, next week, next Wednesday, uh, Wellness Wednesday, bring you free and amazing contact, uh, co context, the content and information so you can take care of yourself. But in the meantime, be well and take care.